Hello, my name is Michael Rudolph and welcome to the GFZ Analog Laboratory where we are simulating mountain building processes and earth deformation using analog materials such as sand, granular um, glass beads or silicones. And today I'm going to show you how to measure the time dependent deformation of granular materials using this ring shear tester. Okay, so the ring shear tester consists of several components. We have here a laptop that is used to control all of the machinery. We have the shear cell together with the lid where the sample is put in. And then we have the ring shear tester itself, which also has several internal components. The shear cell itself is um, a sturdy aluminum um, cell. It has inside several grooves which uh, increase the friction along the base and uh, it also has a lid that has these small lamellae which also increase the surface friction of the lid and where also the shearing is initiated. The machine itself has several uh, sensors. It has two shear sensors which are normal force transducers that are coupled in series. Then we have a counterweight, which serves to um, counter the lid weight. And it has attached to it a sensor that measures the lid displacement. So we exactly know where the lid is positioned. And it has a normal load sensor that is attached to this weight down here, which can be moved along this bar to increase the pull on this pulley. And uh, this uh, then you, makes the normal stress on the sample. The back of the machine, where we can see all the digital inputs and outputs. To control the machine, we have this COM port here, which is used by the software RST control to drive the machine itself. And on top of that, we have an analog output here, which we measure using the Compact Rio to get the data at a high frequency over these four channels that we can measure. Additionally, we have this small trigger sensor here or this trigger output that we can use to trigger our cameras for some experiments if we need that. To start the measurement, we need to calibrate the machine first. For this, we start the control software, which will then ask us to turn on the machine, which is already done. Then the machine does some connection tests and now it says that the ring shear tester is con connected. It will drive back the weight to get the zero switch. Now it has driven forward again to go to the zero level. Now we, it wants to calibrate uh, the normal stress sensors and the shear stress sensors, which is highly recommended for optimal measurements. For this, we put in a lid and only put in this hanger so that you see now the, the bar here is floating in the air and it can calibrate this force sensor. Again, it drives backwards to the end switch. Now the handle is completely free. We can just move it up and down without moving the bar. Now it's getting the voltage of the normal stress sensor. The value hasn't changed, which is a good sign. Nothing has been done with the machine. And in this case, it's 0 0.041 volts. Then it tries to get the original position. Now it calibrates the shear sensors. We don't have to put in anything here. Also takes the average of the voltage between the two. The value hasn't changed. And now it's ready for testing. OK, 
Okay, so now we are going to put the material into the shear cell. For this we use uh, our standardized sieve. In this case it's the SM sieve, not the Geomod sieve. Um, but for this study we are not so much concerned about the actual frictional properties. We are really just measuring the time-dependent deformation. So first we take our sample, which is stored safely in these boxes. In this case, it's the sand from Paris. Try to get as much material, of course, as possible. Also, the boxes and all the equipment should be clean, at least dry cleaned, so that you don't have any mixing of other components. Then we homogenize the sand with this spatula here. Because this is necessary over time in these boxes, usually you move them around, there is some settling, and by homogenizing the sample, we ensure that we have a very nice reproducibility. After this, we can use this chute to um, enlarge the material that we can actually put into uh, our sieve. And this chute approximately matches the volume of the shear cell so that we only have to pour it in once. And then we sieve from a height of approximately 30 centimeters. And we try to rotate the sieve a bit so that we have a very homogeneous layering and that there is not too much material in certain areas. We also overfill the shear cell. So now towards the end you will see that um, I will sieve in more material as necessary so that we have enough everywhere in the whole cell. And of course it should not be too much overfill, so maybe half a centimeter of excess material is fine. Then we use this Japanese spatula to scrape off the excess material. Of course it should be absolutely flat. And then we use this kind of special motion to remove the material without compacting it too much. Now we have to weight the sample, including the shear cell, because the apparatus needs these values to compensate for uh, normal stress changes. Also, we can measure the density because the volume of the cell is fixed and the machine will give us the granular density as a readout. 3717.2 grams. 0.3. <laughs> now we start the measurement. So I have already put in the sample uh, in the shear cell on top of this um, motor. Then we have to put in the weight that we just measured. 3.7 kilograms. Then I also already put in the value of the normal stress that we want to have. In this case, a thousand Pascal and also the shear velocity, which will be three millimeters by per minute. Then we press start and the machine is going to guide us through the setup process. So first we have, of course, to check if all the values are correct. Yes, they are. Now it does a second calibration of the shear stress to ensure maximum precision. Now we have to put in the cell, which we already did. Then we put on the lid by using this kind of hook. Now it's hovering above the sample. Then we use the tie rod that connects the lid together with the shear stress uh, transducers. Then I put 
slight, a slight stress on the crossbar here so that these long holes are completely filled. I take the hanger, put it into the hook at the lid, which is a bit fiddly. And then I slowly let the sample, let the lid sink onto the sample. Now you see there is a slight gap. And in this case, um, this means that the lid is perfectly balanced out. Then we can continue. It asks me to do the same things that I just did, but we follow our standard procedure. Now it will slightly rotate the shear cell, sometimes if there is already a bit of shear stress. And now it's ready to go. To start the measurement, I'm using a custom Python script that I will also provide uh, for you, but this automatically controls the ring shear tester software, which then controls the ring shear tester. And I use this scripts to ensure that I always have constant timing and exactly the same parameters uh, for each experiment. So I just start the script. It will automatically put in the file name and so forth. Now it applies the normal load. You see the lid is going down. It will drive to a thousand Pascal and start the shearing. Now the pre-shear is started and the cell is moved at 30 millimeters per minute. And now we start the seeing the shear zone forming. There is some material which is coming out of the shear cell, but this is accustomed by the software. Now we are in the first shear phase of the shear hold shear test. And this shear phase is adapted in its time for the velocity. So it's one over the velocity so that each interval is exactly three millimeters. When the shear phase is over, the machine will stop and wait for the hold interval. The first hold interval is 10 seconds. The next one is 32 seconds. And the longest hold phase is 36,000 seconds. But this interval we only repeat once because of timing reasons. Okay, so now you see the measurement is done and ready, which is indicated by this yellow window here. There is also some acoustic feedback from the laptop, but I turned it off because it's very annoying. And now we can remove the tie rods, which are completely free of stress. So there is no um, tension anymore. Then we remove the lid displacement measurement device. We remove the handle from the crossbar. The handle is connected to the normal load displacement machine. And then we can remove the shear cell. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed the, this small tour of the lab and how we set up the experiments. You can find more information in the associated data publication, or you can email me or have a look on our website at gfz-potsdam.de. And I hope to see you soon at some conference or at a workshop. Thanks.